Pilots, Drain Man here, and today I want to go over receiver problems because gosh, can that be a nightmare? But I really, really quickly just want to roll through what to do if your receiver is not working. I'm working on this fresh new hot build. I've got a Vista and I'm using it not only for my Vista with my goggles, but I'm also using it for my receiver and it's just not working. So I want to take a few minutes and roll through everything to make sure that your receiver is working and if you have a Vista and all else fails, what you'll need to do to fix it. So the very first thing is to make sure your receiver is powered and make sure it is bound to your radio, okay? So I'm gonna do that by just powering mine up, showing you that I'm getting power, and then I'm going to make sure that it is bound to my radio. This doesn't matter what type of receiver you have, whether you've got an ELRS, a Crossfire, a Vista, an O3, doesn't matter, O3. Yeah, you can run an O3 as your receiver, right, with your DJI radio. Perfect example. So let's go ahead and do this really quick. I'm going to power up my quadcopter, 21 volts, ground, and positive. Okay, now I'm going to power up my radio. Just move through these steps with me, and you may say, well, I already did that. Doesn't matter, just follow them again with me. Let's get you through the steps and you may find that you messed up one and we'll get you working, all right? Are you getting power? So you see my green light? Yes, you do, that means I'm getting power. So my receiver is getting power. Part two of step one is making sure that my receiver is bound. So you'll see that I have a green light there and I've got a green light here showing me that it is bound. All right, so step one, that's a check mark, right? Receiver had power and it was bound to my radio and it still isn't working. And how am I checking that it's working? I'm checking that it's working by going into beta flight and seeing if I have stick movements and I don't. So that lets me know that they're not communicating or maybe they're communicating, but it's not communicating. Something here is not communicating because it's not working. So let's move on to step two. Step two is if you have a Vista and you're using it as a receiver, you've got two wires, S bus and ground. We're going to slide that to the side. Anybody else who is running an ELRS, a Crossfire, whatever you got, you're going to have an RX and a TX, unless it's an S bus generated uh, receiver in that case you're back to S bus and ground but if you are running something that has an RX and a TX like this Vista has an RX and a TX but that is not for the radio that is for the goggles to have communication that's MSP that's going to be my OSD and things like that so let me tell you this RX goes to TX TX goes to RX okay so that means from the flight controller RX I'm going to the units TX, RX to TX, TX to RX, okay? But maybe you've done that and you're like, I know that I've done that, I've checked the wires, I know that they're right. Do me this solid, take your receiver and just take an RX and a TX and swap them, just swap them. I know, I know, you've already confirmed, but just do it anyways. Take an RX and a TX and swap them and just make sure that for sure it ain't working. If you swap those and you start working, then there's your answer. But if you swap them and it still ain't working, then chase those wires back, make sure that your RX to TX, TX to RX, and then go ahead and put those wires back, okay? I just wanna be sure before we continue down this road of troubleshooting, if you don't need to because you're not RX to TX, and TX to RX, okay? The next thing that we need to do is we need to jump into beta flight. All right, so jumping into beta flight, I'm gonna plug in my quadcopter and we are going to connect to beta flight. And you can see that there's my quadcopter, it's connected, it's in beta flight. And what we wanna do is we wanna head over to the ports tab. And it's very important that on the serial that you are using, right? So this one here, zoom in closely, pay attention. Right here, I'm gonna show you. You're going to see that S bus from this Cadix Vista is coming over and it's connecting and you may or may not be able to see it. It is called R2 on my flight controller. So that means that my receiver S bus for my radio coming from my Vista is connected to R2 
on my flight controller. So the, what that means is inside of the ports tab, I need to select that under this serial RX, I need to come over to UART2 and make sure that this is toggled on. Make sure you toggle that receiver in the right spot. If you are running a crossfire or an ELRS, you will target that under the RX and TX that you're using. You've got to be under the same one. You cannot use an R3 and a T4. You need to be R3, T3, and then in here you need to go under your serial RX and you need to select three, right? If you went to T3 and R3, you would come to UR3 and you would toggle this on. You cannot have two on at the same time. You would just have this one if that's where you were. Okay, this situation's a tad bit different. My RX and TX is running for my goggles. So what that means, I have that on UART1. So I have my MSP configuration toggled on for UART1. So that means my RX and TX from my Vista are going to one. Look very closely. You may or may not be able to see it right here. Do, 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 do. R1, T1. So I have toggled on right here you are one. Does that make sense? It's very quite, it's quite very simple. Make sure you're toggled in the correct selections in your ports tab right here in Betaflight. This is very, very important. Now you must hit save and reboot or what you just selected will do and mean absolutely nothing. A habit of mine that I like to do is I will save and reboot and then I will come right back in and I will go right back to the ports tab and I'll confirm that it actually took. And the reason why is because Betaflight is a lot smarter than you think. And if you toggle something that it doesn't like, it's going to boop, kick that out and say, uh-uh. And you're gonna come back in and you're gonna have like, hey, I just toggled this. Why isn't this selected? No, it's not a glitch. It's beta flight letting you know that you've connected somewhere you ain't supposed to be connected. So they're just watching your back. You may ask Drain Man, why do you have a second MSP on UART 3? Let me enlighten you. In this very rare scenario, it's not rare, but in this scenario here, I'm running this all new Jep RC Taker Stack, super sick. I got a video on that. I'll link that for you down in the video description. But this puppy here has Bluetooth, which means that I can use my phone and an app and I can control all of Betaflight through my MSP3, which is where my Bluetooth is configured inside of this flight controller. So that is the reason why toggle UART3 is on, okay? Let me just throw this out there for anybody who just needs this quick, simple solution. If you are running a DJI Air unit or an O3 or a Vista or whatever, and you are using an external receiver like a Ghost, an FR Sky, a ELRS, a Crossfire, whatever. If you are running an external receiver and you are using a DJI ecosystem, you cannot leave the ground and the S bus connected. I mean, maybe you can and you can probably get away with it, but there's going to be those scenarios where it don't work or all of them where it don't work. And you're going to have this problem and you're going to be watching this video when all you need to do is depin the ground and S bus. You could probably leave the ground, but the S bus must come out. All right. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to jump into beta flight and our our serial receiver provider. Okay, let's get over to the receivers tab. This is your serial receiver provider. You see this? This is very important. If you are running a Vista, you must be SBUS. If you're running a Crossfire, you must select Crossfire. If you are running a ELRS, you must be Crossfire. So make sure you have Serial VR UART if that's what pertains to you. If you don't know, you can Google it. Or if you have one of the ones I just named, which are the most common, you're going to be what I just said you're going to be, and you're going to select this. So I'm going to select Crossfire, for example. Now, I'm going to hit Save and Reboot. I want you to watch this. And I'm going to come back into my Receivers tab because there's a problem that happens here for some people, and I want you to see this. Look at this. 
I've got nothing. I've got nothing. There's no roll. There's no pitch. There's no y'all. There's no throttle. How stressful is this? I am crossfire. I am serial. I have my ports tab selected. I've got everything wired, but I've got no, I can't even pretend to move my sticks because I've got no, no, no colors showing me what needs to be there. And this problem is there and it is happening. And some of the newer pilots are emailing me saying, Drain Man, please help. So I wanted to add that to this video, if you are in this scenario, you need to reflash your flight controller, but you have got to flash the correct protocols. Let me show you. So I'm gonna click update firmware. And inside of here, I'm going to click auto detect. And right here, you're going to see it says radio protocol S bus. That is the only one selected. It's super cool. It, it, it's just, it's just compacting the build. Why have crossfire and this and S bus and this and this and J board? Why have all this stuff if all I'm going to use is S bus? Pretty freaking genius that Betaflight did that. But if you're in this scenario where you don't have that and that's all that's flashed, you could be in deep water because you can spend a long time trying to find this and you may never find this unless you found this video. So if you have not encountered that problem, the next time you do, you will know what to do to handle it. But if you have encountered it or you are encountering it now, I hope that you've spent enough time on this video to see this because I have just solved your problem. What you'll need to do is select the protocols that you need. For example, Crossfire, me, I'm SBUS and you flash and when you get back in here, connect, you will see that if I go to S bus, because that is what this is, okay, it'll be there. So let me show you receiver and there we go. That is what beta flight looks like. So I just wanted to throw that in as a little freebie for anybody having a hard time. All right. Pilots, let's go. I'm heating up my flight controller. Let's go ahead and roll through this. I want to show you. All right, let's power up. Radio on. And I want to show you, I've got power. See my light? Can you see my light? There's my light. And I've got power here. Look at that. I'm green. You heard the beeping. That's the beeping because my throttle. Okay, we're good. I'm connected. Green and green. Do you concur? Yes, you do. Now, jumping into beta flight. You are in beta flight with me. No movements from my sticks. Let me show you. Okay, there's the green. I'm connected. I've got nothing. I've got nothing. <laughs> I've got nothing. So, what do I do? Well, I just rolled through the list that Drain Man gave me and it's still not working well. I do have one little more fix if you are running a Vista. This is a hardware issue and we are going to roll through this together. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug everything and then we're going to move through troubleshooting this Vista. So I want you to just sit tight and hold on to your CDs. All right, pilot, so let's dive into the scope and let's take a peek. So you're gonna see four diodes. There's one here, 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 and here. And uh, pulling the schematic and doing a little research online, I have found that this diode right here is for S bus. We have TX and then RX. So if you are in the situation where you're not getting OSD from your Vista, you can actually remove a diode from here and it may just get it going for you if the diode is bad. Diode is very simple. It just helps protect. A, it can be used for multiple things. It depends if it's a forward based, forward biased diode. There's many scenarios for diodes, but generally you can look at them. I'm a plumber. You can look at them as a check valve. They only allow current to flow one way. So they can protect your circuit. If we remove this, we lose that protection, even from a voltage spike. So 
Do I want to remove it and risk damaging my Vista? Not really, but you just saw that we went through the entire checklist and it's not working. So the only thing left is possibly a bad diode. So I've got to take the chance and I've got to remove this and see if it's working. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pry this off. I would generally put some flux here. I would use my heat gun, which I, I still may have to. I'd use my soldering iron, and I, I would get this off the right way. But my Vista's all loose. It's not secured. I've got uh, you know paste here, thermal paste here to help protect. I, I don't want to tear this thing up, and I don't want to start you know making a mess of things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to just pop this puppy off. So let's just give that a quick whirl. Here we go. Oh, there it is. Now, I don't know. I don't know if that removes so easily because it was bad or if it's just because it's so tiny. But I've got to be very careful here. I can easily start damaging more. You know, we can easily start doing more bad than good. There you go. There you go. Make sure that's good. Make sure that's good. Beautiful. And then we need to get that little speck out of there. And that diode is oh, officially gone. Okay. Oh. Okay, now, I'd like to give this a test because it may be shot and we just did all this for nothing. So that diode was right there. I mean, it's it's so small without the scope. I mean, we could have easily got it done, but I probably would have had a hard time showing you that on camera. So, all right, I'm not going to put any of this back together because it's the simple facts are, if that didn't fix it, something else is wrong. I'm going to have to get into deeper troubleshooting or I may just put a stop work order, toss this thing, and drop in a new one at this point because this has just become insane. So, all right, so we've wired up our plug. My antenna is still connected right here. We wanna make sure with this all exposed, all these electronics exposed on my Vista, that I'm not touching anything that can uh, you know, prove to be conductive, all right? Then we're gonna go ahead and connect our flight controller, so let's go ahead and do that. And quick check, we're gonna pop into beta flight. There you go, we are live. And last but not least, let's connect power because the Vista does need power to be able to transmit. So if you were trying to do receiver testing and you haven't powered your Vista, and that was part of step one where we said, make sure you have power and make sure you're bound. Oh, I need to power up my radio. All right, so let's take a peek. So you see we've got our green on our Vista right there. I don't want to move it around too much. Boom, there it is. We've got green on our radio. So we are now live on the Vista. We are live on the radio. And let's head over to the receivers tab. Moment of truth. <laughs> Moment of truth. <laughs> yeah. So let's move through real quick. We've got our yaw. Okay. Now let's check our throttle. Throttle is good. We've got our roll. Roll is good. And then we've got our pitch. Pitch is good. We went through all the steps and those steps are important because I'm telling you right now, nine out of 10, you are going to fix this problem without having to do this. But if you have a Vista and you've reached the end all be all, boom, there's your solution. If you're running a Vista and you have no OSD and you've ran through all the steps and you're just not getting OSD, this is the final solution. You can remove the RX or the TX diode because they will, if they're shorted, they're going to prevent communication from passing. So I'm super excited that it worked. I'm super excited to try out my new build. I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did and I will see you on the next one.